the Shiki Science Show clips. The other questions that I want to do is kind of taking a bit of a sidestep is the fact that on this channel a lot we talk um, I talk about um, targeting aging and finding ways to target aging and effectively age associated diseases and um, there's a lot of work being conducted at the moment in terms of looking at epigenetic marks and its association with aging and so I was just wondering what are your uh, current opinions on the potential for precise epigenome editing by using maybe CRISPR-Cas9 approaches. For example, instead of having um, the Cas9 fused to a adenine-based editor, you instead have um, a demethylase enzyme or an acetylase enzyme or something completely different. Right. And, and researchers have done exactly what you've just described. And there are um, multiple systems now, including one uh, just reported or being about to be reported by Jonathan Weissman and, and Luke Gilbert and their, their co-workers. I think Jonathan's given a bunch of talks on the topic, so I suspect he wouldn't mind uh, me talking about it. Uh, but uh, the Weissman system is called CRISPR-Off, and it uses, uh, uh, it uses a cutting incompetent Cas9, like we use in our base editors, a, a dead Cas9, fused to a variety of very uh, carefully and and cleverly chosen proteins uh, to programmably turn off uh, a whole region of, of DNA. Uh, and it does so in a, in a heritable way, in a way that's durable, uh, which is really quite okay. cool. So it's not as though you necessarily have to administer for the rest of the lifetime of the organism or the patient uh, the, the editing agents um, to get a long lasting change in gene expression. Uh, but I, I generally agree that, uh, that um, you know, targeted epigenetic modulation is one of the, uh, the great frontiers of, of this new uh, kind of democratized programmable way of looking at the genome. And in the interest of full disclosure, uh, I, uh, am, I have co-founded a, a company in this space uh, called Chroma Medicine, uh, with Jonathan Weissman, uh, Keith John, and, and Luke Gilbert. So uh, to be transparent, uh, I, I uh, certainly believe enough in, in the potential of, of those systems uh, to be involved in trying to translate them into patient benefit. Cool. And you mentioned one question I was going to ask you about, which is the heritability of the fact that obviously with genome editing, it kind of makes sense, right? If you've managed to edit the genetic DNA sequence, it can get passed on through the semi-conservative replication to next cells. But epigenetic um, changes, as you say, it can be questionable about whether or not they would be permanent. But um, I think our understanding of um, the epigenome obviously is improving all the time. And um, cell states, which pretty much governs which genes are being expressed in different cell types, um, and cellular reprogramming going from a differentiated cell back to a stem cell, um, are all things that essentially could be mediated by just making maybe a few precise epigenome marks that could propagate throughout the rest of the cell. I don't know what your thoughts are. Right. Are. No, I, I totally agree, and I, I think one of the um, one of the really cool scientific discoveries of the past few decades, in my opinion, have been uh, has been the discovery of ways that epigenetic marks uh, are maintained over time, um, so that changes to uh, the, the state of DNA modification or proteins that regulate gene expression are not simply um, modulating gene expression only at the moment that they're installed, but rather uh, they can actually be passed down to progeny cells as well. So, I mean, in a sense, it's, it's the core definition of epigenetics that uh, you can um, regulate uh, changes in biology, even that are heritable, that don't necessarily require changes in DNA. And that, that phenomenon is, is, both, is both now pretty well established, uh, is, is highly uh, relevant for treating uh, potentially uh, genetic diseases, as well as doing a lot of cool research in, in uh, biology and genetics. Uh, and I think is poised to be one of the uh, the great new frontiers of of the sort of programmable taking control of our genomes space. 